Good day, Terrarians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 9 of our multiplayer expert series with Six Impossible, Connor, Everlost, and Saffrim. We have been farming in the jungle to create lots of chlorophyte, and I have hundreds of bars. I'm going to start crafting for us some cool new gear that we're going to be able to use to beat up a pl giant plant monster. And then once we kill that giant plant monster, we'll be able to move on to even more cool new stuff. So, it's going to be exciting. We're going to have a lot of fun. First things first, let's make some new weapons for the people that are here. I <clears throat> promised Connor one of each of the Chlorophyte melee weapons by request. We've got the Partisan, the Claymore, and the Saber. That's the Saber. Uh, 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 uh. Here's the Claymore. Ooh, it shoots a little ball that goes flying through. And the Partisan, which is a big long spear and fires off a little poof of death at the end, which is neat. Now for six, he wanted the shot bow, which I can't demonstrate because I don't have any arrows on me, but there you go. Thank uh, you, sir. Saffron, we've got 14 bars here for you to turn your poison staff into the much more powerful venom staff. That's the, one of the magic items available. And I'm going to start crafting some armor. Oh, more chlorified ore. Yay! Let's see. I want two of the helmet. One for six and one for myself. I want one of the headgear for Saf. We want three of the plate mail. Darn it, six. You keep moving away from me. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was funny. And we want three of the leggings, so that we all have a set of chlorophyte armor. And finally, we're going to make Connor a new set of armor as well, the turtle armor. Assuming I can actually stay in front of the crafting spot that I want to. Bam, bam, bam. This stuff is great because it gives a leaf crystal over our head that will help us kill things. And it just gives a lot more defense than the Frost Armor did. Give it, well, I guess it doesn't give a lot more. It gives one more defense than the Frost Armor did. But this gives me, what is it, 11% range critical, 16% range damage. Instead, I have 16% range damage, 5% damage, 7% crit, 8% crit. Yeah, we just have a whole lot more damage crit and about the same movement speed. A little bit less, no problem. Plus this really cool crystal, which is a lot of fun. Now, I want at least 90 more of the chlorophyte bars. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and convert all of the ore that we have into bars because we'll be using it later to make even more stuff once we have beaten the boss. And we're going to make the chlorophy chlorophyte jackhammer. <clears throat> This is a new hammer item that is going to be a lot better at breaking walls than anything we currently have access to. Huh, it won't let me throw this at you for some reason. Did my button get reset on me? No, no, it just didn't want to fun function for some reason. There. Now everyone except Everlost has one. And I think that's everything we were going to make with the chlorophyte. Let's see. Oh yeah, right. Turtle. I almost forgot to make the armor for Connor. There we go. Turtle leggings, turtle scale mail, and turtle helmet. Now the great thing about the turtle gear is this causes enemies to be more likely to target, which means that Connor can finally play the tank, as things will be most likely to go after him. Now the other great thing about it, when you equip the full set of turtle gear, you have a 100% damage return, so you get super thorns. Does amazing things. Yeah! Gotta love that. Okay, so let's go find ourselves a Plantera Bulb in the jungle somewhere. And then we're gonna try Plantera, see how well we can do against him with the five of us outfitted in the next tier of gear. All right, folks. Strangely, farming the life fruit we needed for all of us to hit 500 hit points took far longer than it did to farm up all of the chlorophyte we were going to need. So, yeah, watch out. If you're playing multiplayer, getting, for us, it was 
hundred life fruit, it's not a fast process and you're going to be at it for a while. So we have a fairly basic arena set up here around one Plantera bulb. And well, you should have a number more nearby enough for us to run, break them, and come back if we want to fight him multiple times, which we do. We're all buffed up, I believe, correct? Correct. Yep. Correct. All right. Who wants to do the honors? Saf should. I think Saf should. I think all right. Yep. Should. He started it. So. Plantera has awoken. He's coming from the top right. All right. 144,000 hit points. Once he hits 50%. He's going to start charging people. Right now, we want to do our best to stay away from him if we can and avoid his seeds. He seems to be charging Connor because, well, I mean, Connor's wearing the turtle armor. He is the tank. That is actually 100% intended. The rest of us get to focus on doing damage because Connor is the one that will usually be targeted by single bosses like this. Wow, he's going down fast. <laughs> All right, we're about to hit phase two, and that's when he starts doing a lot more damage and getting a lot more dangerous. There we go. Boom. But he also has a lot less defense in phase two. So we'll be able to better... We'll be able to bring him down even faster. And we're tearing through his little minions, his little extra tentacle vine things. That's great. All right, yep. Plantera is really easy in multiplayer when someone else has taken the hits. Run, Connor, run. Yeah, can you potion? Can you do anything? Not yet. Oh, dear. Queen B is awoken. What? Did someone just think it would be fun to fight both? <laughs> that was random. <laughs> uh, luckily, he, the Queen B doesn't do much in the way of damage, but we got another 5,000 hit points worth of Plantera we need to take out before we worry about the B. There we go. Now everybody Man. kill the B. Oh, wow. No, bad be bad. So yeah, with proper <laughs> preparation in multiplayer, Plantera is not much of a worry. So let's uh, crack open our reward bag. And well, first let's throw some things away. Oh, do we have some lingering mob issues? There we go. Yeah, let's get rid of some random junk that's uh, clutter cluttering our inventory. And then we'll crack open that treasure bag. Let's see, I have the Spore Sack, which always drops. We have a Lazy pygmy, pygmy Staff. Fantastic. We're going to want a handful of, of those. We have the Unpleasant Flower of Pow. Or Flower Pow. All right. So that's for you. And this is for you. And luckily, we have a Witch Doctor in the jungle right over here who is now going to be selling some new things. Did anybody get the temple key? Uh, yes, I have the temple key. Spore sack is I cool because you will spawn stores, uh, spores around you all the time that will damage other enemies. The great thing about the witch doctor right now is he will sell the tiki toe. Uh, he's not selling the pygmy stuff yet. We might need to wait overnight or something. Let me check on him. He's supposed to be selling us pygmy armor now. Uh, Pygmy Staff in inventory. Oh, so he'll only sell it to, um, Everlost. But yeah, Everlost will be able to buy the Pygmy Necklace, the Hercules Beetle, both of which will improve his, our accessories that improve his minions, and the Tiki Mask, Tiki Shirt, and Tiki Pants, which are cool stuff that will, um, they are the next type of summoning armor past Spider and we'll get him an additional minion, as well as 10% summon minion damage each piece. Plus a set bonus that gives another minion, which is great. So he's going to be able to have five pygmies out, which is amazing. So we're gonna go reforge the new stuff we got, find uh, Plantera, kill Plantera another time or two, and then we're probably gonna head for the dungeon because there's some really cool stuff that we can get in the dungeon now that we have killed Plantera. As you, well, the message just disappeared, but as you can see, Shiitake, mush, uh, Shiitake the Truffle has arrived. When you have 100 blocks of mushroom grass and mushrooms on the screen and a house in the biome that this creates, which is a surface mushroom biome, as you'll be able to see when I hop up on top of here, you can see some mushrooms in the background. 
it becomes a place in hard mode where the truffle can spawn. He's not super useful early on. He does sell a pretty decent hammer and a fun little spear, but the real reason that you want him around is the auto hammer, which you can buy for one platinum, or if you have the discount guard, 80 gold. And then when you have the auto hammer, well, you're gonna want to take a bunch of these glowing mushrooms back with you. So fast and easy to get when you have the proper equipment to do so. Put uh, that bit of mud back because I accidentally mined that up. With the auto hammer, it is a crafting station where you can combine glowing mushrooms and chlorophyte bars into shroomite, which is a new metal. Shroomite can be used to make a number of really cool items, mostly useful for ranged characters, but there are a few that are useful for everyone. There we go, and we're gonna put the auto hammer right over here, and we're gonna grab our chlorophyte and get to work on that. We have 119 chlorophyte and another 251 ore we accidentally picked up. Uh, where's our, there we go, chlorophyte bars. Excellent. There's 150 chlorophyte on hand. Now, for the armor, hang on just a moment. I need to make sure I don't make too much. It's 24 uh, and 18 and 12. So 54 bars each for the armor. We're going to need 108 bars just to get both of us a set of armor. And it's 15 glowing mushrooms per bar. So come over to the potion mats and restock them glowing mushrooms. Oh dear, and I accidentally restocked all of the stars and regular mushrooms as well. No, 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 no. Put those back. We've got too much junk in our chests. We need to do a sorting run, but that hasn't happened quite yet. And I just accidentally restocked the glowing mushrooms back into the chest. Whoops. Inventory woes are a thing. That's 94, 9, 6, 7, 8. There's 99. Let's go ahead and make some of what we're after right now. Uh, let's see. We're both going to want the Shroomite leggings. Come here, Six. Have some of the best armor in the game for you. Yay. We're both going to want the Shroomite breastplate. And now we've got a choice. Shroomite Helmet is Rocket Damage Increase. Shroomite Mask is Bullet Damage Increase. I'm going to take that one because I'm using the Mega Shark. Oops, and I'm out of Shroomite. Hang on, I need to go make a little bit more. Or I could teleport myself. It's okay. Wormhole potions are cheap. And... Oh, wow. Am I out of glowing mushrooms again? I am. All right, let me uh, fix this. I'll be back in a bit. All right, that's a little bit better. We're gonna need to spend some time getting a lot more glowing mushrooms than we currently have if we wanna outfit everyone with hoverboards and shroomite digging claws, and that's definitely something we want. But getting our ranged attackers outfitted with the armor is a great thing. And we're definitely gonna need to mine a lot more chlorophyte bars because we're gonna need to get Saffron outfitted with some specter armor in the dungeon as our next goal. However, that's going to be after we kill Plantera a couple more times. Now, my Shroomite armor gives me, um, 15, 28, um, 35%. Well, it's just, there's a huge bonus to damage and crit. I mean, my Mega Shark's up to 74 range damage right now, but that's because I was standing stationary. If you stand stationary for a moment, you'll fade out to invisibility which will cause um, enemies to not target me and increase my range damage. However, as soon as I fire, actually, no, it stays. Wow. All right. That's, that's ridiculous. I thought it would be canceled when I shot. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, we're going to be able to do some sick, sick things with the Shroomite. And I really feel like I'm able to do away with some of the, with the last defensive re accessory I'm using, the Onk Shield. It'll be great. I can't join, rejoin, okay, good, I'm in Team Pink, excellent. 
So we're gonna go kill Plantera another time or two and see what kind of cool stuff we can get from him. Oh, by the way, I found a rainbow slime. They can show up in the hollow, which we have one right here when it's raining. And it's needed for one of the last achievements that I needed to get. The, oh, where is it? Uh, it's gonna be a Slayer achievement. That much I'm certain of. Um, Stardust, no, Champ, no. Slippery Shinobi, no. Not pretty in pink. Where does Gelatin World Tour? Anyway, it's called Gelatin World Tour and you need to kill every slime that's in the game, which means you need to be in both of the, maybe it's Challenger. Slayer of Worlds, topped off. Rainbows and unicorns. No, I have no idea. Uh, there it is. Gelatin World Tour. Defeat every type of slime there is. The rainbow slime is likely to be the last one you're going to need. This leaves me with needing exactly one achievement to 100% all of the achievements. Oh, two achievements. I need the Supreme Helper Minion, which is going to take another 59 fishing quests, and the Terrarian, which drops from the final boss. So, we're back to the grind. All right, we have reconvened after nearly a week off. Everlost, Saffron, and Connor are heading over to the corruption to our left to kind of flatten things out and make an underground corruption farming area so that we can get the corruptors killed faster. We need two more vitamins to get the last of our party outfitted with the Onk shields. And let's show you the cool thing that we're going to be able to do now that we've got some more shroomite hanging around. And in fact, I think someone brought back more glowing mushrooms somewhere. Where are the glowing mushrooms? In the potion chest should be. Potion something chest. Ah, there's some. We don't have a lot. <laughs> That's okay. So what we're going to be using our initial shroomite for, 15 mushrooms per shroomite, jeez, is... Getting some shroom, well, one shroomite digging claw. Ooh, and it came out with light. That's going to be amazing. Let me show you why these are going to help us out. I'm going to need to get over to the jungle to do so. So, I'll meet you there. Okay, just for comparison's sake. Here's the light pickaxe, uh, the light pickaxe axe that I have been using. Oh, jeez. Hornets, die. You don't kill me while you're at it. <laughs> And this can get us through here at about these speeds. The light shroomite digging claw, on the other hand. And this is without a potion. If I were to get killed by a hornet because I'm not paying attention. Alright, back in a minute. Alright, once more with 30% less dying. If I try this with a mining potion, well, I can mine the silt faster than it can fall. This, this is what speed is like. And you know what? This isn't even the fastest mining tool in the game. It's just the fastest that we have access to right now. Yeah. This is going to make collecting chlorophyte in the jungle a heck of a lot faster and easier. Whee! What's that? I can move through, uh... I can move through mud almost as fast as I can walk. That's amazing. Ow. Ow. Right. Expert mode. Can still die to random things. Not in melee style armor. Don't have a ton of life regen. Am glass cannon. Must remind myself of these things. Ow. I want to play with you anyway, Hornet. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. We're going to be gathering up chlorophyte and glowing mushrooms. I made a little underground glowing mushroom farm down the... Oops. Down the central rope shaft, which is still spreading out. This is going to be useful both to get glowing mushrooms and for getting what we need to summon one of the bosses later on. So we'll join you back when it's time to do some more combat challenges. Uh, most likely not Plantera, as you saw. He goes down pretty easily. Oh, Queen Bee is awoken. How'd that happen? Oh, that's off again. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll come back when we have some combat challenges. Not Plantera, not the Queen Bee. Most likely when we tackle the dungeon as our next uh, goal. Though we may end up going after... Um, 
the temple before that. We haven't decided exactly. See you soon. Fantastic. A solar eclipse is happening. That is a random event that can occur every morning after Plantera is defeated. Well, it can occur before that, but the chances are much, much higher after Plantera is defeated. Now, most of the monsters are going to happily walk through this wall and end up in our pit of death. But we're still going to need to actively kill some of them. And we want to build... We're going to need to build a much better place to kill thing, uh, invasions and eclipses and that sort of thing, aren't we? Ow, nails. Yeah, by the way, uh, Nailhead and Eyelazor. Yeah. Eyesore. Anyway, there's some nasty creatures out there that we're going to need to be killing. Now, there's some cool drops that we can get from the solar eclipse. The most important one that springs to my... Well, there's two Im very important ones that spring to my mind. One of them is the moonstone. Not the moonstone, the night charm. Another one is the Neptune shell, which comes from the creatures of the deep. I don't remember where the night charm or whatever it is comes from. That's okay. And then when Mothron appears, inevitably, uh, we can kill the Moth to get Broken Hero Swords, which are going to be used to make a fantastically powerful weapon for our melee user. Which I'm very excited about. There's another nail head over here trying to kill me. And half succeeding. Thing. But yeah, ooh, Reapers, they can drop a sickle that our melee might like. And butchers, of course, drop a ch and there's the nails. <laughs> <laughs> but you, yeah, you get the general idea of what's happening on. <sighs> the solar eclipse will last for the entire daytime, meaning from 4.30 a.m., until 7.30 p.m. You get plenty of... Oh, hey, look at that. There's the sickle that I was talking about that the Reapers can drop. I guess we got one already, huh? Yeah, there's a nail gun in the lava, unless somebody already got it. I just don't have inventory. That's fair. I got it. Okay. Nail. I'm out of uh, inventory space myself. Uh, there is a magic weapon over there, Saf. There's also a nail head in our safety bin. Yeah, both doors seem to be open. It's because this safety bin won't actually keep us safe from the nails. Oh, hey, the butcher's chainsaw is on top. Oh, yeah, I see. Positing things as fast as I can. This is can my favorite melee weapon. Everybody's dying. This is great. It's because we don't have a real... We don't have something set up that's uh, prepared to handle this. Like, our trap is not designed for this. Toxic flask, that's what it is. Ooh, uh, deadly spear. Nice. Well, meant one's attacking me. Oh. Ow. One attacked you to death. Deadly spears can drop a new minion weapon, which is the deadly spear staff. Uh, where are you? Oh, there's another one. Honor. Oh, We're not. No. You're, you're really not going to want to be in there. It's not safe. <laughs> no, not safe. Uh, it, it's a sa that safety is a lie. Oh, there's a nail head over here. I could use some help with. All right, Connor, where are you? I am up here now. Okay. Stand still. You get that and that. Have fun. Ooh. And Saf, you're over here. Darn it! <sighs> I'm trying to distribute weapons to you guys. Have we even had a Mothron yet? Not that I've seen. Weird. 
All right, here you go, Seth. Thank you. There's a vampire. This thing's awesome. Uh, the Find scythe? You. Yeah. Oh nice, the creature from the deep actually has a really cool swimming uh, animation. Never seen that before. Yeah, I'm gonna sit in our arena up top where there's fucking vampires. Hopefully you'll get deadly spears up there as well. Unfortunately, we won't get a lot of the things that we are uh, that I'm looking to kill, which is the creature of the deep. We're gonna need five of those Neptune shells that they drop, at least. Anybody get a deadly sphere staff yet? Guess, nope. guess not. I have the one that you gave me. I didn't, up. I didn't get... Oh, okay. There we go. Mothron down. Yes. Bad Mothron. Bad Mothron. You know what? It occurs to me that... Uh, I should be using my good bullets for this. In fact, I should probably just stop using the, uh, the bad bullets in general. Any Neptune shells yet? Those dumb gnomes. <laughs> they got us both. <laughs> they almost have mint up. Almost. I wasn't Not warned quite. about these dangers. Huh, the nails don't shoot down. These things like laugh at you when they kill you. Yes. Just cruel. I know you don't creature from the deep. You die. Oh god, Mothron. Yep, no the Mothron. Nope, Mothron's dead. Or not. Not quite. <laughs> oh, he got me as well. I forgot how hard they hit when they touch you. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, fantastic. All right, we're gonna, you've seen all of the creatures that are here now. Um, we're going to tackle the rest of the Eclipse and we'll show you, show off the loot come evening. All right. It hates us. We have hit nighttime. No broken hero swords, unfortunately, so we're definitely gonna wanna fight a good bit more of them, but we have all five moonstones, which is amazing. That, uh, that might change our priority slightly because those are just great. And we have four of the five Neptune shells that we need. We got a very nice yo-yo, a handful of them. The Eye of Cthulhu, which comes with 157 me melee damage base. Looks like an eyeball, has a massively long string, and I believe can stay out infinitely. Don't know if uh, Connor's going to want to... Oh, nope, not infinitely. Or maybe it can, and I'm just mousing over my inventory. Uh, maybe Connor's going to want to make use of one of those. We also have the Butcher's Chainsaw. 164 base melee damage and swings very fast, but very low range. Plenty of death sickles. 78 base melee damage, but leaves that nice spinning scythe of doom in the air. Uh, multiple Neptune shells. But the way the Neptune shells work, you turn into a merfolk when you enter water. Also, we can combine that with the moon charm into a combo device. The toxic flask is a magic weapon that leaves a cloud of death wherever it lands. So, oh, there you go. Nice. 
And the moon. Uh, oh, the nail gun. That was the other one. 191 range damage for me. And this is a gun, so it should get bonuses from my sets. I'll have to double check that. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Actually, I don't know if the if this works because it's bullet damage bonus, and these are not bullets. Uh, let's find out. Yep, yep. The nails count as bullets. Fantastic. Oh, or maybe they don't. Um. Hang on. Let's see. 45. 45. 13. 13. Okay, the 15% increased bullet damage does not seem to apply properly. Well, nail gun, 129. 129. And mini shark, 44. 50. Okay, so the bullet damage applies to guns. The nail gun is not a gun as far as the shroomite mask is concerned. That's a bit of a shame. However, it does hit awfully hard, and it doesn't exactly fire slow. So let's go try a test of- oh! They're explosive! That's interesting. Maybe this uh, uses the other shroomite uh, uh, item, the explosive one that I was thinking about making. I will have to check that out. Oh, and we also got the deadly sphere staff. Only one of them though, but check out the cool pet that it summons. Yeah, that guy's neat. We're going to be giving that, of course, to Everlost to make use of. I think I threw it at the right person. I'm not 100% certain, though. Might have ended up in Saffron's inventory. So, let's show you that combo item, as long, well as a couple of others that we can make now. We can make the Moon Shell, where you transform to a werewolf knight and a merfolk when entering water. The merfolk gets a, the permanent effects of a gill and flipper potion. So you can jump infinitely underwater, move at full speed, and you will never run out of air. It is awesome. Love it, love it, love it. And what's the last thing to show off? Oh yeah, the moonstone. You'll note that that's a material. We'll take this over to the guide. Hit crafting, moonstone. If I put the sunstone and the moonstone together, we get the celestial stone that works at both times. And you'll note the celestial stone is a material. The mo uh, the moon shell plus plus the celestial stone gets you the celestial shell, which has the exact effects of all four of the materials. All right. Apparently, we have managed to misplace the other. Oh wait, here we go. I have no idea what I threw at uh, uh, threw at staff, but here's the uh, deadly sphere staff. Yeah, there's here's another one. We we have a zealous one that you threw at staff. Oh. Okay, well, I threw a Ruthless one at you. So, apparently we had two Deadly Sphere Staffs. Nice! Uh, so yeah. That's pretty cool. We're in a good shape now, and a, yet another damage thing thing that I can keep on hand. Um, unfortunately it also works at night. Oh! One other thing. While we were fighting the pirates, we got our hands on Lucky Coin, Gold Ring, and Discount Card. When I go over to the co Combination Bench, we can combine the gold ring with the lucky coin to make the coin ring, and then those two together with the discount card creates the greedy ring, which has the effect of all three accessories, which is fantastic. This is also going to allow us to create an amazing gold farm, which I'm going to be working on, because we're going to need a lot of reforging, and we're down to like three or ten platinum or something crazy low like that. And also, when you get the Philosopher's Stone, which is a nice defensive item and that it reduces the cooldown of healing potions from 60 seconds to 45 seconds, you can combine that with your Band of Regeneration to get the Charm of Myths with the effect of both. I'm not going to be using much in the way of defensive items. At the moment, I'm keeping the Onk Shield only because the immunity to knockbacks and debuffs is extremely, extremely beneficial. But I might even end up changing that out eventually with the way things are going. We'll find out. Anyway, that seems to be everything from the solar eclipse. Uh, we're going to build a better invasion trap over here. And I'm going to head out to the ocean and upgrade our little money farm to be significantly better than it is. Or maybe build a brand new one. I'm not certain which yet. And otherwise, I think that we just continue getting more Shroomite together and more uh, Shroomite claws and hoverboards for everybody. Speaking of, and who wants a hoverboard right now? I do. Okay. No one else is going to speak up. I'll speak up. 
All right, uh, let's see, grab you. And now I should be able to make the hoverboard. I thought, oh, I need the souls of flight. Where are our souls? Exotic components. It's not like we're, actually, we're gonna have to go kill more wyverns. We only have 34 souls of flight. Huh, that's actually kind of funny. So, Question. oh, hoverboards are 18 each. So we're gonna need a total of 190 shroomite folks. And we have used 36 of that so far. Here you go. Have hoverboard. Enjoy. Answer. Um, anyone have leaf wings that they want to trade for this warding pair I have? Ah. We'll deal with that uh, in just a I'm moment. All right. Let me check the time here. All right. Yeah, we're out of time for this episode. So join us tomorrow in episode 10 of our five player multiplayer for the hard mode dungeon. Between episodes, we're going to get the rest of the shroomite together, build a couple more farms that we'll show off next time. Thanks very much for joining us. Hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If so, leave a thumbs up. Tell us what you liked about it. If not, leave a thumbs down and tell us what you'd like to see differently in the future. Either way, if you want to see more Mentat and friends later on, hit subscribe for more videos, and we'll see you next time.